Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the news on Equinox Television Live from our headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Pablo Jonathan. In our top stories, road traffic injury remains a major cause of death in the Republic of Cameroon, a country that continues counting deaths on its roads and three persons died in two separate accidents today in the country's economic capital, Douala. And out of the country, the United States of America decides to cut hundreds of troops in African countries as it focuses on countering uh, challenges and threats from Russia and China. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this edition of the news on Equinox Television. Three persons died in two separate accidents that are cut today in Cameroon's economic capital, a dweller at the Bona Prison neighborhood. Two persons died while the rye in at the rye in the Dweller for municipality. One person died in yet another accident. Smanjikan Gabriel has more. A commercial motorcycle shattered beneath a lorry. A taxi destroyed after a collision. These were the immediate results of an accident that occurred at Bonaparizo neighborhood in Douala. Circulation around the accident scene was difficult as the vehicles and motorbike involved in the accident still occupy a section of the road. According to this eyewitness, one of the victims of the accident who died was formerly a mortuary attendant who started working with a taxi just two weeks now. Apart from the taxi driver who died at the Lacantini Hospital, the person who died as a result of the accident was the driver of the commercial motorcycle. The accident has been blamed on overspeed and the non-respect for road signs. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Rai in Bonaberry, it was a woman who was crushed to death by an onrushing lorry. <laughs> According to this witness, it was because of the lack of stability by the lady since she was on a bike with a bag. If you stability, there is a say, it through a scheme for cyber or camion, that would then ask the camion, scrushy. The bike rider who went unconscious was taken to the Bonasama Hospital. The lady who died, reports say, was from Melon and her names were Matikam Marie. <laughs> In the second part of this newscast, we'll be analyzing what one of the most read medical journals in the world, the British Medical Journal, has qualified as the neglected epidemic, referring to more traffic injuries in the Republic of Cameroon. On to something else, about 15 stores have been raised by fire beside the food market in the northwest regional capital, Bamenda. Smanjikan Gebri has the details. It was a Black Friday for traders doing business beside the food market in Bamenda, northwest region of Cameroon. <laughs> The traders got up five days to see that fire has consumed several stores. We get all this money from, from about six o'clock in the morning, where we discover smoke coming out from one of the shed behind me. And when we started, we saw the call the fire brigade. The lines were not going through, but later it got through and they said they're on their way coming. And later we. I was trying to open to see how it has started popping some of the stores. We just come out at the middle because she had the current, this thing that has been connected, that current have just back at the middle we just discovered flame of fire and we struggle to see how it has started moving the other thing. We just thank God that there's no major loss of human beings, but only I can that have been A total of about 15 stores were alleged to have been consumed by the inferno. The battle put up by the army rescue unit led by warrant officer Taku Paul 
enabled the flames to be controlled from spreading to other stalls. The major problem faced by the Army Rescue Unit was the inaccessibility of water, reasons why they have to connect their pipes at long distance to tap water. Though no lives were lost, the flames caused enormous damages to business persons who were trading beside the food market. The flame, sources say, was caused by an electric cable that might have been wrongly connected. Security was highly beefed up at the incident site by a Commander Ebonki Alvet of the Gendarmerie Unit. Health officials in the littoral region of Cameroon have urged inhabitants of Lum in the Mongo division to get rid of pesticide containers that they are using in their homes. And this was during a sensitization uh, campaign aimed at discouraging the inhabitants of Lum from using the pesticide containers to store water, oil, and other liquids that they use for consumption. Details in this report by Inno the use of pesticide containers in Lum in the Mungo division of the littoral region by the population for storing vegetable oil and some food items is growing at an alarming rate. Phytosanitary personnel in the littoral region who organized a sensitization meeting in Lum have strongly condemned the persistent use or exposure of these pesticide containers. Farmers are held responsible for these. When these farmers buy their chemicals from the market, they take to the farm and they use it, they throw it carelessly. Some enter the water, drinkable water that people carry from the lower part of the stream and drink it. And then some use these waste containers to light fire. Some use the containers to carry drinking water. Even the tapas, they use, they use this container to put uh, palm wine. Phytosanitary personnel educate that women who lit fire with these pesticide containers end up inhaling the toxic smoke which intoxicates the system. A pregnant woman, they note, will give birth to a child with some deformities. Households have been urged to bring out such pesticide containers from their homes for incineration. We recommend the best strategy at the level of their farms. They should have all the motivation to bring out all empty pesticide containers because they are dangerous to the environment and they are also dangerous to their own health. The struggle for the eradication of these toxic containers for storing water, oil, palm wine and some food stuff is not just that of phytosanitary officials. With uh, all the stakeholders, Minade, Ministry of Environment, we hope that uh, this mission will be achieved. Health, they say, is well. Members of Cameroon's lower house of parliament will begin examining the 2019 finance bill uh, tomorrow at the ongoing November session of parliament. The members of parliament have been drilled on the new rules of examination and adoption of the state budget. They sat through a seminar get thoughts, getting them acquainted with the new rules. For greater details, here's an extract of the director general of budget at the Ministry of Finance. Take a listen. First of all, we have to appreciate the, the level of uh, uh, income and uh, the resources and, uh, and the charges so that we, we, we appreciate the, the level of the deficit. Before we, we discuss with the mean to give to the administrations, first of all, we discuss on the, the relation between the resources and the charges of the state before we give the means to the administration. Uh, formally, we, discuss, we, we, we start with the means to give to the administration, and it was not, it was not so good. So the, the, the new financial regime uh, stipulated that we have to, first of all, emphasize on the relationship between the means and the charges before we give the, that resources to the administration. 
and in sports, the under-23 indomitable lions of the Republic of Cameroon have defeated the under-23 squared of Chad three goals to nothing within the context of their first 2019 African under-23 Cup of Nations qualification played today at the Amadou Aijo Stadium in the nation's political capital, Yaoundi. The first goal was called at the first half that was through a penalty uh, shoot out and the other two goals were scored in the second half of the game. The return leg will be played in Jamina. Chad and the indomitable Lions of Cameroon will be playing against uh, uh, Morocco uh, today within the context of qualifications for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. The encounter between the indomitable Lions of Cameroon and uh, Morocco will kickstart at 8 p.m. And that's it for the first part of this newscast. Coming up next, Talking Point. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us in Talking Point. We are receiving uh, Gocha Fidelis. He is the Secretary General of the organization in charge of road victims. Katva, you're welcome. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here again once more. Now, we're talking about uh, road uh, victims or victims of road accidents ahead of the World Day for remembrance of uh, traffic, uh, road traffic accidents that will be coming up on Sunday. And just this day, uh, three persons died in two separate accidents here in Douala. Yeah, as you see, uh, the road is a permanent risk factor to the population. Every day, people get injured on the road. People die on the road, not only in Cameroon, but in the world at large. And that is why uh, in, 2000, in 1995, a European a Federation for Road Victims created the World Day for Remembrance of Road Victims. And they celebrated it alone up to about uh, uh, 2000, where uh, the, the Pope and other uh, leaders in the Catholic joined their federation and proclaimed the third Sunday of November each year as the World Day for Remembrance for Road Victims. And it was adopted by the UN uh, Terror Assembly in 2005. And now, so today is not only uh, associations celebrating the day, but they're not celebrating, they're commemorating because it is a day to call political leaders, to call uh, decision makers to understand the fact that the road is a permanent risk factor to the population and that strategies and policies policies that need to be put in place to ensure that people move safely on the road without being injured nor being killed. And one of the most read medical journal in the world, the British medical journal, BMG, has uh, indicated that uh, road accidents, or in other words, traffic, uh, road traffic injuries, remain a major cause of death in Cameroon. Yeah, I think that even uh, Major cause of death in Cameroon, yes, but at the level where we are now, the Cameroon government also has, is so much implicated in road safety policy making. Since the visit of the UN Special Envoys for Road Safety in Cameroon last August, uh, there are a lot of strategies and programs, uh, even uh, laws that are being uh, propagated to be passed so that maybe in the years ahead, better policies and strategies on road safety will be developed and implemented to ensure that the rate of which Cameroonians are being injured or dying on the road be reduced. And talking about the rate, where, where, is the, where are we situated as far as Cameroon uh, is concerned? Uh, actually, for this 2018, I can say that, we, that it is not high as the previous years, but I don't have the real statistics. But uh, we, we can see by this time last year, we were going almost to about three to 4,000 injuries registered on our roads. But this time we are lesser than that, which means that there are some good and impressive uh, steps that the government and the civil society in general is taking to ensure that our roads become more and more safer. But, but more efforts need to be done. 
Because I, well, efforts are being done, like you're indicated by uh, government and even NGOs like CADVA, uh, there are still many accidents that are recorded every day within the town of Douala, within other major cities where the traffic is dense and on highways across the country. Yeah. Uh, what explains this? Yeah, effectively, as I said, efforts have been made. The efforts have been made in terms of uh, policies and uh, laws. So it is not yet physical for the people to see. No uh, law projects to be put into law, passed into the assembly, it takes some time. And I can, as I speak from here, I know and I can certify that the process of putting in place a national road safety agency. And once that agency will be propagated into law, we will have so many activities that will go outside there to advocate for safer roads. And we will, we will see that the rate of accidents on our roads and even in our cities will drastically drop down. And this, uh, I want to say the oh, bad state of our roads. Yeah, infrastructure, road, road, road infrastructure is one of the issues that is highlighted in the Millennium Development Goals by the UN uh, General Assembly. And uh, I think that the Cameroon government is also playing a role in that. All the governments are trying to see that they improve on their road infrastructure to ensure that roads are constructed with this uh, safer, with safer infrastructures in a way that them without being injured as it is now. So, but you can, if you look from the new roads in Cameroon, you find that there are some improvements. The pavements are a bit light, larger than the ones that we used to have before, and those are improvements that they are trying to take. And Even though we have unsafe behaviors from drivers, yes, but which, which, which is a factor that needs to be roads, we, we still have only the Duala Yaoundé the Dual Carriage Highway, and another Dual Carriage Highway that will be linking the uh, Simaleng International Airport and uh, the, the, the central town of Yaoundé. Why is it that it's taking uh, too much time Look, to uh, have this all those All those are budgeted programs, and uh, I think even in your house here, when there's an issue that concerns to be budgeted, it takes some time. But what is noted is that there are improved steps of improvement that the state has been taking. We as, no, members of this, you, we as members of the civil society, we have the role to push them, and we are pushing and showing them that what they're doing is delaying. They should do it more faster because every day people are using the road and incidents are coming like the ones we just projected now. So at that level, it's not only the affair of the state, it's the affair of the general the, society. Even companies yeah. need to be involved in road safety. And you were also talking about the behavior of drivers and Good. riders on the road. That is, talking about the behavior of the drivers, that I say even companies need to be involved in road safety policy making. Because there are companies with more than 200 trucks outside there. They don't have any policy that they are putting in place to ensure that their drivers respect pedestrians on the road. And then also the advent of the motorbike is another very big risk factor. People are just buying bikes and going to the road with no knowledge of road usage, no knowledge of road safety. So it is causing a lot of problems. And these are behavioral areas that need to be redressed. And by both the civil society, organizations, companies, NGOs, and the government. And every day we are seeing trucks on our roads uh, which are in bad technical state, uh, whereas some of them, many of them have the uh, uh, roadworthiness certificate, what, what they call in French, uh, 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 what they call in French, uh, they call it what? Uh, agreement de transport. Or what do no, no, the roadworthiness certificate that enables them to ply the roads. But yeah, to, use, to use the road. And that is why I'm saying that uh, they are start, there are policies in place where the government is going to put to ensure that each company with, it, is the, with is a certain the, number of trucks need to have a road safety policy making in the administrative system. If you assess those companies, you'll find that road safety, they, they don't have any road safety policy there. They recruit the drivers, they give them the trucks to go on the road. They don't have driver's induction programs. Very few companies are coming into that now. Because if companies are all involved in road safety and the civil society involved, the policies and uh, administrative procedures of the government will be adhered to, and the risk the will be minimized. Are the companies issuing the roadworthiness uh, certificates or the visit technique, as they call it in French, are, are uh, they false? Well, the visit technique, I think the, the additionary measures in place uh, that the government has tried to reform the procedure of visit technique, and they are investigating. When they get a car involved in an accident where the visit technique was made to be good one and assessed to see that that car does not merit to have that visit technique, that center where that ticket was produced is amended. And within the context of the uh, World Day for Remembrance of Road uh, Traffic Victims, uh, what is CADVA putting in place as far as activities, uh, you know, you're very much involved in sensitization 
uh, effectively like just what we are doing here. We are sensitizing the population, making the government to be aware. This is a day that does not only concern NGOs. Maybe the government is supposed to use this day to highlight the population, to project to the, world, to the Cameroonians to see what improvements, what government is putting in place to ensure that the roads are more safer for Cameroonians. So this is a forum, and I thank you people for bringing up this day today so that we talk to the population to understand that every Sunday, every third Sunday of November each year is the World Day for Rims. And we have some programs that we are going to do in churches to pray, to ensure that we... God, we invite the God Almighty to uh, bring grace and to ensure Cameroonians are more responsible when they are using the road. Uh, are you also going to be carrying out some activities that are get touch, uh, reinforcing uh, the uh, control uh, on uh, the motorbike sector in particular? Here in the city of Douala, administrative authorities have taken measures. Nasiri Paul Bia did when he was uh, the, the, the re-prefect and then he left. Uh, Joseph Mashi Betran has come. Others have been taking measures. Joseph Betia Asoma, when he was governor here, and even Samuel Didoni Vaha Dibois has been uh, hitting hard on this thing, but it's becoming just a hard, not too difficult to crack. As a, as, as a member of the civil society organization, we don't have the powers to control. We propose our solutions. When we go to the field and we get difficulties, we write reports, I will propose to the administration. These are, these are some of the solutions that can be put to ensure that these things are done. And through working sessions and seminars that we partake with government uh, uh, members, we pass our messages to them. And that's why I was certified to you that some of our uh, messages have been taken into consideration. And in the years or days, months ahead, the government will take good steps to ensure that road safety is updated in Cameroon. Ngocha Fidel is Secretary General of CADVA. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Inviting Thanks, you to come. ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Goodbye. Equinox Television.